Good afternoon, um, I'm Jenny Benison. I'm a GP at Nidri Medical Practice in Edinburgh and I've been a member of the Guideline Development Group for this new Eating Disorders Guideline. So we're here today to, do, to discuss pharmacological therapies for adults with eating disorders and we'll cover anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder in that order as, as we go through. So, um, Adults with these main three eating disorders, what, what is the question? Are pharmacological therapies effective? We'll discuss the use of antidepressants, antipsychotics and other drugs and we'll look where possible at the evidence for their use when compared with or used alongside other pharmacological therapies, placebo or usual care. The outcomes we are interested in are listed here, redu reduction in distress and anxiety, remission, as in no longer meeting diagnostic criteria, as well as relapse, mortality, adverse effects, weight gain, and obviously we do need to look at cost effectiveness as well. So let's start with looking at anorexia nervosa. I think in the background it's, remember, it's important that we remember the altered or starved physiology and low body weight for many of these patients, which makes the risks of prescribing higher than in the rest of the population. The prescribing of psychotropic drugs can be particularly risky, especially with regard to electrolyte imbalances and associated cardiac side effects. Antidepressants and antipsychotics are frequently used in this group, but evidence to support their use isn't that great. There aren't many randomised cont controlled trials, and there's a tendency for small sample sizes and short follow-up periods. Many of the studies that we've looked at are now old and have been disregarded for that reason. And much of the research consists of very small studies or simply small case reports. The other issue is that patients frequently decline to take part in research studies for fear of weight gain often and once they do um, enrol in studies the dropout rates are very high. The other thing is that studies tend to have very rigorous protocols and this means that the populations who take part in these studies are not necessarily representative of patients that we see. The time course of anorexia in its different phases and subgroups will make responses to medication very difficult to predict and it's therefore not always easy to generalise from the studies. Most patients who are included in studies are women and will also be involved in psychological or nutritional rehabilitation programmes at the same time. They may also be taking other psychotropic medications as well as the med medication which is on trial. So for antidepressants in anorexia, fluoxetine has been the most studied. However, three randomised controlled trials failed to show any benefit over placebo in anorexia, although the drug was at least well tolerated. For antipsychotics, there have been seven small studies of second generation antipsychotics, olanzapine, risperidone and quetiapine. Weight gain is used as a proxy for overall in improvement and we'll come back to that because that's possibly quite problematic. There was no significant difference anyway between treatment and placebo groups. A recent larger randomised controlled trial for olanzapine did report statistically significant weight gain after 16 weeks compared with placebo. There were no adverse effects reported and no metabolic problems. But in order to achieve and maintain healthy weight, patients with anorexia need to have acquired healthy psychological skills as well. So we need to take care with these results, not to assume that any change is simply due to the drug. Other drugs have been looked at as well, including oxytocin and cannabinoids, um, but the evidence here is not yet sufficiently strong to make any recommendations for our guideline. So the overall recommendations for anorexia, what do we want to achieve? Perhaps reduction of stress and obsessionality are good endpoints. Any medication that is prescribed in this group needs to be carefully monitored and patients need to be encouraged to enter into research studies if appropriate and available. So moving on now to bulimia nervosa, once again fluoxetine has been widely studied and a systematic review of randomised controlled trials of medication and psychological interventions showed short-term benefit from fluoxetine after two to four months, the benefit being greater at doses of 60 milligrams than 20 milligrams. Fluoxetine seemed to reduce behaviours of binge eating and purging and to lessen the overvaluation of weight and shape. However, of all the studies, it's only those where medication is included, when side effects are reported. 
These can be considerable with SSRIs like fluoxetine, with anxiety and irritability prominent, especially in younger patients. For other antidepressants and for topiramate, the evidence is not yet there to support a recommendation. So in conclusion for bulimia, antidepressant medication should be considered as a short-term treatment or adjunct to psychological treatments. Fluoxetine should be the first choice, usually at 60 milligrams daily, and other antidepressants can be considered if SSRIs are contraindicated. So now moving on to the evidence for binge eating disorder. Medication in binge eating disorder is maybe more controversial. Most studies that we identified came from North America, whereas we know the context is very different, a different health system and perhaps a different culture around medication. Much of the evidence is conducted by groups which have clear links to the pharmaceutical industry. And many of the studies focus on weight loss as a primary outcome. The pursuit of weight loss in patients with eating disorders is recognised in psychological therapies as a powerful maintaining factor for eating disordered thinking and behaviours. So there's therefore a potential conflict between the treatment goals of active weight loss and reduction in the psychopathology of eating disorders, and this makes prescribing and binge eating very difficult. We do not yet know enough about the relationship between appropriate weight management interventions in obesity and effective tra treatments for eating disorders, so there's a clear need for further independent research. Looking at antidepressants in binge eating, disorder. Antidepressants are less effective than psychological therapy for binge eating disorder in a meta-analysis and any benefit associated with SSRI medications is only short-lived. A separate randomised controlled trial confirmed that the addition of fluoxetine to psychological therapy was not associated with any increased benefit. So moving on to other medications, there have been trials of all sorts of medications in this area. Weight loss agents such as subutramine and orlistat stimulants such as Ramonabant, bupropion, desotriline and fentamine, and the anti-epileptic drug to pyramate. All of these have failed to show any statistically significant advantage over placebo in reducing binge eating disorder symptoms. Weight loss associated with orlistat and bupropion did not continue beyond the study period. There are many papers looking at the use of list dexamphetamine, which is a variant of dexamphetamine or speed in binge eating. And some of these show benefit, but with significant adverse effects. The gains in terms of weight loss were lost immediately after stopping the treatment and the longest period studied was 38 weeks. List dexamphetamine is associated with significant potential for harm and its risks in pregnancy are not known. It's only licensed in the UK for ADHD under specialist initiation. Once again, here we see that the studies have rigorous protocols and exclude many patients. The level of monitoring in the study population is huge um, and it's not feasible in the general population. So in conclusion, for binge eating disorder, medication is not recommended either as an alternative to or an adjunct to psychological therapies. Where there are clear comorbidities, medication can of course be considered with careful consideration of underlying risk factors and potential side effects. Thank you.